Hi there. I was asked to write a piece for um, Arizona Public Media, NPR, um, and I did. And it turned out it was a little bit too graphic. Not that much, but you know, just enough to where you didn't want your 8 o'clock in the morning drive time person to read. So, what I'm going to do is share it with you. The work is called The Chupa. I wish I had soundtracks and everything, but you're going to have to fill in your soundtracks yourself. So here it goes. The Chupa by Weston Oaks. Howls in the night are commonplace in Arizona. You can see the narrow beasts if you look closely among the scrubs and scrabble. Coyotes. The pirates of the desert. But are they really all just coyotes? Sitting outside with the cool October breeze, one can hear the yips, yells, and howls of the fell beasts. Sitting so frantic, so happy, so full of life. But among each pack is one who is not like the other. Among each group of desert-dwelling coyotes of a chup is a chupacabra, and the yips and cries the laughter of the other desert canines as they watch this leader tear through reality. The night is like any other. Leaves are turning. The hummingbirds are moving south. Winds whips from the mountains like microstorms. A bite of cold is in the air. Not enough for a jacket yet, but enough to raise the goosebumps on your arms. The pansies and flowers that had been so carefully watered during the hard summer months are dry and brittle in their potted containers. The pack of fell beasts came slinking from the desert into the outskirts of a town. Your town. They are hungry. Their howls designed to lure smaller dogs so that they might, well, you know what they do. And then comes a different voice. A low howl, a morose growl at the world. Something more dangerous than a coyote, but a cam but camouflage like it is one. This one is larger, and it has eyes that glow even within the reflected light from the blood moon. Its face is meaner, its body is leaner, its ribs show like sticks pushing against fabric. It looks misshapen which is why it likes to hide in the shadows or among a pack. And it is hungry. Not for dogs or cats or anything domesticated. No. It is hungry for people. People of the tenderest kind. An interesting fact that every prairie knows is that the folk is that when folks go to the hardware store and buy doggy doors, they only think of what goes out of them. If they were to think of what goes in them, they may never purchase one. Because where there is egress, there must be ingress. The chupa sees a light on the back porch. Toys litter the backyard. A big wheel, a ball a Tonka truck. It glances at the coyotes around it and they titter and laugh. There's a fence, but what's a fence to a jupa? It climbs the fence and slips into the yard unseen. With no large dog to greet it, it has no fear. There's a doggy bull, but he's covered in dust and grime. Some time ago a small canine lived here. It can still smell the residue of the love it was given and the death that came to it. But the flap of the doggy door was never sealed. 
Even now, it swings gently in the breeze, allowing the sense of the two adults, a cat and a baby, to waft through. Other smells like fried chicken, biscuits, and beans join the scent. It doesn't know these. It doesn't know these by name like we do, but it has encountered them before. Where that smell exists, humans exist. This it knows. Inside is a flickering. The humans are watching something on a wide screen. They are oblivious to its presence. It eyes the door again and decides to wait. Soon they will go to bed and forget there's a place it can enter. Soon they will roll in their sheets and dream that it isn't a thing that exists. Until then, it waits. He glances back at his pack. They howl and laugh at the fools such humans are. Coyotes. So fun to watch. So enjoying to hear their laughter. They don't know the joke is on them. For there is a chupa among them. And it is hungry. Happy Halloween.